Following yet another weekend of Unreal Rugby World Cup action, I've identified seven things in which we have learned from this weekend. As always, please do let me know in the comment section down below if you agree or if you disagree with the statements I'm going to read. Point number one, which is more of a fact as opposed to a value judgment, Southern Hemisphere are on top. Um, there's a lot of sort of hype around the Northern Hemisphere going into this tournament, namely Ireland and France, but ultimately it's the Southern Hemisphere teams uh, which predominantly prevailed in the Rugby World Cup quarterfinals with uh, upsets from New Zealand, South Africa and Argentina. I don't really like calling them upsets because they're some unreal rugby teams that I've just named, but if you were to look at the bookies odds, they were in fact underdogs. Uh, potentially the, 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 the lack of pressure on these teams uh, might have actually helped them in the games. Um, it's not nice to be expected to win a game and perform unbelievably and it really does add a point of difference and definitely another level of emotional energy going into a game when you're when you're the underdogs. But yeah, the Southern Hemisphere teams prevailed and England are the only Northern Hemisphere team left in the tournament, which I can sit here and smile about it now, but after Saturday, I'm not sure that will be the case. Um, I think the box will be very happy to have what is a an England team which aren't firing on all cylinders, aren't firing anywhere near full cylinders at the moment. And uh, yeah. Southern Hemisphere are definitely on top and have proven to us um, northern countries that you, we have to take them unbelievably seriously. Not that Ireland and France didn't, but a lot of the fans were, were leaning towards the Northern Hemisphere, which maybe maybe now looks a little bit foolish. Uh, point number two, take the three points. Now, I thought this was a theme in quite a few of the games, uh, most specifically the Ireland versus New Zealand game. Johnny Sexton had plenty of opportunities to take the three points. Johnny's got a brilliant boot and is excellent off the kicking tee although he did miss one in the game. And uh, the Irish did tend to go for the lineouts and back their, back their abilities, which fair play to them. If you have the confidence, you clearly uh, are very able to, to execute, but ultimately it didn't come off on many other occasions. And Johnny Sexton could have accumulated what is around 12 points off of the boot if all were successful, which I'm not saying that would have meant the Irish would have won because you can never say that and games always ebb and flow, but potentially it might have been the correct option to take the three points. Point number three, group stage losses don't matter. Uh, South Africa proved this in the last World Cup going on to win the tournament after losing to New Zealand in the group stages and it ultimately looks like the same is going to happen again. If the two favourites, huge favourites in this World Cup, may I add, in New Zealand or South Africa, if they were to win the tournament, they'd be then the second team and the back-to-back -back, uh, champions to have lost a group game. So uh, it goes back to the old adage of, of life. <laughs> so wives tips from me, I wouldn't look to me for any motivation, but... Uh, it's not. It's not the. Um, it's not the the setback. It's the comeback. Ultimately, that that is sort of defines your team's legacy. So fair play to the teams which have built upon their losses. Come back far far stronger. If you compare the All Blacks team in the in the quarter final against Ireland to the All Blacks team in the opening game against France, they are completely chalk and cheese. So fair play to those teams. The breakdown is key. I think this was a theme throughout all of the games, um, especially the the Ireland New Zealand one once again. The, the All Blacks almost doubled the amount of turnovers from the Irish, which was a real key going into the into the latter stages of the games, uh, which meant the Irish really didn't accumulate as many points as they probably would have if their breakdown was a bit tighter um, earlier on in the games. And I also think it was a big factor in the South Africa and France game. Uh, the South Africans, I would say, were, were the better team in the breakdown, and ultimately they won a breakdown penalty uh, that led... Hondre Pollard to kick the 50 meter penalty to take them outside the three point margin. So the breakdown is the key in many of these games. Point number five, experience wins games. Now, look, there's often a lot of talk about how many caps are on the field and Eddie Jones, I know when he was playing, when he was coaching England, loved to mention about the number of caps. I think the average he was saying that you need to win a World Cup is about 800. Ultimately, the, the number doesn't really matter. It's sort of what positions they're in. And, uh, in the, the Wales against Argentina game, a lot of caps went off in the late stages, and namely Dan Bigger, which was a huge loss, and younger Sam, Sam Costello, who I'm sure has got an unbelievably bright rugby future, comes on, and that is the point in which Argentina then pulled away. It's very important to have lots of caps on, on the field, especially in the latter stages of the game. Uh, if, we look at, if we look at Ireland losing Josh van der Fleer, and if we look at uh, South Africa, for example, they brought on Hondre Pollard, a general. They brought on Faf de Klerk, a general. All of these players are sort of steeped in rugby caps and sort of amazing international experience. So having your experience on at the end is definitely a very important factor. Point number six, anticlimactic semi-finals. That could be the case. Um, 
obviously the quarterfinals were absolutely unreal, not only in rugby action, but in sort of historical rugby fixtures. These are games in which will go down into the history books and will stay there for some times. Um, and now we're left with semi-finals in which there are two huge favourites. Um, it's, it's very difficult to sort of get yourself up potentially as a neutral to watch the, watch the semi-finals when you'd expect the All Blacks to, to put, not hiding on Argentina, but when they've beaten them by 40 points already uh, in the last year. And then if you look at the, the South Africans who have, who have pretty much came to Twickenham and battered England, those are the, the two semi-finals, which is nothing compared to the games which we've just seen. Who knows, England could spring an almighty upset, but unfortunately that is not looking like it's going to be the case. So yeah, potentially the, the semi-finals have been played a week early. Point number seven, big names shine. Um, in, the, in the big test matches, you need your experience and your best players to turn up. And I think in all of the games, I don't think it was lost by any team. I think it was ultimately won by a moment of a big name shining for their teams. Just to go through a couple in the Ireland versus New Zealand game, Sam Whitelock, a big name for, for the All Blacks, a player on which is ultimately the, the, the most capped um, South, sorry, uh, All Black player, um, secures the turnover in the dying minutes. For South Africa, it was either Andre Pollard uh, with his big big penalty kick which shone, or ultimately Eben Etzebeth with his uh, hugely important try late in that game. Two huge names of South African rugby and they prevailed. If we look at the England game, Owen Farrell with the drop goal, he's England's big name and he stood up to the pressure and got man on the match as well. And then for Argentina, well there's lots of points in which in the game which uh, were phenomenal. But it was Nicolas Sanchez, the old veteran who got the intercept and kicked a late penalty to take the game out of the Welsh's reach. So those are just examples of the, the big names stepping up and winning the game for their teams. So those are seven things in which I have identified and ultimately learned from this weekend's a rugby action. Some unbelievable games in which went down to the wire. I hope you all enjoyed them. Let me know in the comments which was your favourite game. If I had to pick one, I would still just about go to the Ireland versus uh, New Zealand, mainly for the sort of 30 plus phases at the end. It was just phenomenal to watch. Uh, big shout out to the to the South Africa and French game. If, if the first half um, was replicated into the second half, I'd 100% go for that game. But I thought the, the ability throughout the, to keep the scoreboard rolling in the, in the Ireland and New Zealand game was probably my favourite aspect. But two amazing first halves of rugby and of nail-biting second halves in both of those games. Uh, so let me know which was your, was your favourite and then let me know if you agree or disagree with my points on the board. I'll look through all of the comments as always and yeah, thank you very much for watching.